Good afternoon, everyone. A few things at the top. I think you've seen our statement that just was released on Pakistan. The United States condemns in the strongest terms the terrorist attacks today in Quetta, including the murder of Bilal Anwar Qasi, president of the Baluchistan Bar Association, and the bombing at the civil hospital that killed dozens of Pakistanis and wounded many others. We send our deepest condolences to the loved ones of those killed and injured. We offer our assistance to Prime Minister Sharif as his government investigates and works to bring these murderers to justice. These terrorists targeted a hospital, the judiciary, and the media, the most important pillars of democracy. These brutal and senseless attacks only deepen our shared resolve to defeat terrorism around the world. We'll continue to work with our partners in Pakistan and across the region to combat this threat. Next on Macedonia, the United States expresses its condolences to all those in Macedonia who have suffered in the recent flooding. The people of Macedonia are in our thoughts and prayers as they mourn the dead, treat the injured, and address the extensive losses and damage caused. With that, Matt. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I don't have a lot today, but let's start, uh, let's start with seeing if we um, get an answer to a question that I asked twice, or that was asked twice last week, having to do with the Iran and the $400 million shipment. Um, and that question is, uh, are you now able to say whether or not the plane with the money landed before the plane with the prisoners took off from Tehran? Because as you may know, since the question was last asked on Thursday, uh, one of the former prisoners said that they had to wait for this other plane, mm -hmm. or at least an, an other plane to arrive. Are you able to shed any more light on that? So I'm not going to get into the TikTok of specifics, but claims that our freed Americans were not allowed to depart Iran until a plane full of cash landed anywhere are false. As U.S. officials have previously publicly discussed, there was a delay in our citizens being released that day that had nothing to do with the Hague settlement and was related to resolving some last-minute issues solely related to the prisoners. Most importantly, locating and ensuring all of the individuals who were involved with the prisoner swap were on the plane and ready to depart with Mr. Rezaian, Mr. Avedini, and Mr. Hekmadi. Suffice it to say, getting all the pieces put into place, making sure our citizens were released, and with our reciprocal goodwill gesture of providing relief to certain Iranian citizens here in the United States, required delicate diplomacy up to the end. So I think that answers your question. So, okay, I missed the part where you said that when we the said, plane yeah. arrived. We, it was the question if there was a delay before the plane taking off until a plane coming down, it was false. There was not. So, in there other was words, not a delay. There was no timing that was associated between the two. Okay, well, whether or not you intended for there to be timing or not, is it is it correct that the plane with the money landed before the plane with the prisoners took off? No, claims that the freed Americans were not allowed to depart until a, until a plane full of cash, and I'm doing that in air quotes, are just false. Yeah, but, but still, in terms of the timing of it, did one arrive before the other left? There was no delay in allowing the Americans to leave. Well, you just said there was a delay, and it was related to Well, the there was no delay waiting for a second plane full of cash. Okay. Yeah. I understand that you don't want to draw any connection between the two things. I just want I just want to know whether or not the plane with the money landed before the plane with yeah, the Yeah, I'm not going to get into a TikTok. What I do, though, want to disassociate the idea, you know, that you haven't said, but, uh, but has been in the public narrative, that there was some sort of tie between the two. Yeah, you, I realize that you guys don't think there was, but it seems a very simple question to ask whether or not the the plane with the money landed before the plane with the prisoners took off. I mean, I don't. You know. Yeah, I I have no exact TikTok on that. What I do know is that the plane with the Americans was only delayed being uh, taking off because of logistics that were associated with the people on board. Um, and then also on Iran, uh, yeah. you, you probably will have seen that uh, the Iranians yesterday confirmed that the execution of this nuclear scientist who had uh, come to the U.S. and then left, uh, given the fact that he was here and that you all spoke about it at the ta mm -hmm. time that, that he returned to Iran, uh, I'm wondering if you have any thoughts about this, if, uh, if you're trying to track it any more closely than you would have 
another case? But what I'd say is, of course, we've seen those reports. You know, we reaffirm our calls on Iran to respect and protect human rights to ensure fair and transparent judicial proceedings in all cases. We have consistently and publicly expressed our concerns about Iran's human rights record through a range of channels. As you know, we include a large number of Iranian cases um, in our annual human rights report, in our international religious freedom report. We also partner with other countries to discuss this in the UN General Assembly and the UN Human Rights Council. So um, the way you the way that the administration is looking at it then is, is as is as a case, uh, just like a human rights um, violate, potentially human rights violation case, not anything special because of his Correct. his past. Okay. And do you, do you believe that he did not <coughs> receive due process? What I would say is that, you know, we've raised our concerns on that. I'm not going to speak specifically about this case. As Matt indicated, we were very public about this case uh, when he chose to return to Iran. Just going to let our comments. But why, I mean, you're talking generally about concerns about due process, but, you know, we're asking about a specific individual. Mm -hmm. Do you, you know, do you think he got due process or not? Yeah, I couldn't speak to Iranian judicial um, procedures related to the specific case. Um, you know, when this individual chose to return to Iran, we obviously spoke about it then. You know, as I said, we've made our concerns known writ large around our uh, around Iranian uh, due process, around Iranian respect for human rights. Okay. Can we move to? Sure, Matt, you're good. Yep. East Asia. Our shot. Um, two two topics. One. Sure. Um, what is your assessment of the vote in uh, Thailand about the referendum there and? In particular, do you believe, A, that the uh, environment in the country prior to the vote was conducive to a free and fair vote uh, without intimidation? And uh, B, do you believe that the approval of the new constitution, including the provisions reserving seats for the military or military chosen, um, uh, lawmakers is, is a good thing for democracy. Okay. So I have, I have quite a bit to say on this, so thank you for the question. Uh, we do note that Thailand's Electoral Commission has announced preliminary results that a majority of Thai citizens who voted in a national referendum on August 7th approved a proposed constitution. We do, in uh, response to your second question, remain concerned that the drafting process for the Constitution was not inclusive, and that open debate was not permitted in the run-up to its adoption. Once the results are final, again, we understand these are preliminary results, we urge Thai authorities to proceed with next steps to return Thailand to elected, civilian-led government as soon as possible. As part of the process to return Thailand to democracy, we strongly urge the government to lift restrictions on civil liberties, including freedom of expression, the right to peaceful assembly, so the Thai people can engage in an open, unimpeded dialogue about the country's political future. And, and can you address specifically the question of your view of the draft constitution uh, itself and the seats reserved for uh, military chosen so we, lawmakers. I think I've raised our concerns on the process leading up to the draft constitution. We raised concerns about it not being inclusive, not being open. You know, in, in terms of the reservation for the military seats, you know, as I said, we continue to urge Thai authorities to return Thailand to an elected civilian-led government as soon as possible. And then one other one on, uh, on the Philippines. Sure. Um, uh, you'll have seen that dozens of Philippine uh, government and police officials turned them in, on, turned themselves in on Monday, a day after uh, newly inaugurated President Duterte linked them to the drug trade. <coughs> uh, if I understand it correctly, um, he, the president, had ordered the police to hunt these people down if they failed to surrender within 24 hours. Um, so a couple of question, uh, questions here. One is, uh, is this a good uh, judicious use of, you know, the exercise of the rule of law to demand people surrender and threaten to hunt them down? And second, um, what do you think about the 
hundreds of people who have been killed since Duterte came into office as president. Um, uh, these are, uh, by some estimates, it's 400. By other estimates, as many as 800 people have been killed as suspected drug uh, dealers, uh, including some by vigilante squads since he took office. What do you think about that? So there's a lot there. You know, I, I guess I'd start sort of taking a back step and, and taking a look at, at our partnership, which is based on respect for rule of law. We'll continue in our conversations with Filipino authorities to emphasize the importance of this fundamental democratic principle. You know, we, as you know, and you've heard us say many times from this podium, speaking broadly, is we believe in rule of law. We believe in due process. We believe in respect for universal human rights. Um, we believe fundamentally that those aspects ensure and promote long-term security. We are concerned by these detentions, as well as the extrajudicial killing of individuals suspected to be involved in drug activity in the Philippines. We strongly urge the Philippines to ensure its law enforcement efforts comply with its human rights obligations. Okay, Barbara. Changing the topic. No, Are I you guys? I'm sorry. I've got one more on Philippines, and I'll go to you. If I may, uh, of is course. that true? The United States, States recently announced 32 million dollar in assistance to Manila's efforts to fight against drug trafficking. Okay, so the 32 million is not new funding. So, so I, I actually need to correct you there. It's rather cumulative funding previously appropriated that we're currently implementing. Assistance provided to these funds, I'd like to emphasize, is subject to the same vetting that our other security assistance is. So all of our security assistance promotes human rights through training content and by promoting professionalism, due process, and rule of law. Just want to clarify, so of the course. 32 million should not be used in any activities involve actual judicial killings? Extra, no, exactly. And then um, I don't know if you saw the report recently come out from Duterte have some very strong words to say about you as ambassador to Philippines, yeah. and Mr. Goldberg. Um, given the remarks being so insulting to you as envoy, how do we, how should we expect a cordial cooperation between the two? I would say two things on that. First, specifically on the remarks, we've seen those inappropriate comments um, made about Ambassador Goldberg. He's a multi-time ambassador, one of our most senior U.S. diplomats. We have asked the Philippines charge to come into the State Department to clarify those remarks. When did you call the charge I understand that that happened today. And what, and what did you, besides just asking for clarification, I mean, what did you, what yeah, did you? I'm not going to read out that detailed conversation, but it was specifically on those remarks. Okay. Uh, Hold on. Yeah. What, uh, what was – were there specific remarks that were raised um, with the charge? Uh, yes, specific remarks that were made about our ambassador uh, to the Philippines. I know, and I'm aware of what they were, but was there anything that was more egregious in what was said than – No, I'm not going to – I'm not going to detail that conversation. No. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, just a, uh, two questions about Turkey. Um, sure. Turkish officials have said they've asked – they want uh, a number of people associated with Gunan extradited as well. Um, can you tell us anything about that? Have they made any requests who these people are and what association they have with him? Yeah, it, as always, and, and I think we've spoken at this um, quite a bit about Mr. Gulan himself, the extradition process is a formal, legal, technical process. We're not going to unpack that. In terms of other extradition requests coming in, I just I have no information. I, could, I couldn't speak to them. And they said today also in Turkey that 10 foreigners, foreign nationals, had been arrested um, associated with him. Do you have any information about that? Were any of them American? I have no information on that. And just uh, – no quick change of topics as I speak. Well, you know what? Any more on Turkey? I'm sure we have more on Turkey. Barbara, let's close sure. this out and then we'll go back. Go ahead. Um, I was wondering if you have any travel announcement for Secretary Kerry, because there are reports suggesting that the Secretary will be in Turkey on August 24th. I have no travel to announce. Anything uh, more on Turkey? Yes. Do you have any comments on what Mr. Erdogan just said that he's, he wants to, uh, you know, he wants to improve relations with Russia? Uh, and work with Russia in the fight against ISIS and, and many other issues. Does that, first of all, does that concern you? Do you have any comment on that? Is that in any way 
puts the spotlight on sort of strained U.S.-Turkish relations? You know, I, I guess what I would do is, is emphasize where we've been since this failed coup. Turkey is a friend. It's a NATO ally. It's a partner. You know, we stand with Turkey as they continue to work through this. Um, this isn't a zero-sum game. And certainly the fight against Daesh is something that concerns all of us, regardless of where we are in the world, not just Daesh, but violent extremism writ large. So, um, you know, I've seen Mr. Uh, President Erdogan's comments. I wouldn't have anything specific more than that to read out. So what do you think? I mean, how do you uh, explain this insistence, you know, right across the whole political media and so on fabric of, of, of Turkey, that they insist that somehow the United States was involved with the school in one way or another. Yeah. You know, we've, this we've, just keeps on going. Yeah. You know, we've spoken not, about that, Saeed. We've I dismissed it absolutely as absurd, as without fact. Yes. You know, I'm not going to um, bat back, you know, every piece of rhetoric that we see in reporting. I can't tell you if it's accurate. Um, but, but what I can tell you is accurate is that we stand with the democratically elected government of Turkey as well as the Turkish people. So do Anything, you think, wait, are we staying on Turkey, please? I'm done. Okay, more on Turkey? Turkey? Go ahead. Uh, President Erdogan, as you know, has been pushing for Turkish national reconciliation in the wake of the attempted coup. With all parties except the pro-Kurdish HDP, which, which is conspicuously left out of this national reconciliation, do you have any comment on that? Do you think it is a prudent idea? I, I wouldn't speak to that at all. I think, you know, what President Erdogan does as he continues to build reconciliation and continue, you know, building Turkish democracy is for him to speak to. Do you, you actually believe that he's building reconciliation? I would say They've that... They've arrested 60,000 people, right? No, and, and we're, we're aware of is this. Is that reconciliation? What I would say is that we have spoken about this a lot. We've, we've spoken about our concerns you know, with Turkey both publicly and privately. You know, in speaking specifically to comments on 